We've known about them for centuries. We've been photographing them for decades. And beginning today, a new pair of missions will be launched to bring us closer than we've ever been to Jupiter's icy moons. They're very mysterious and we uh, have lots of questions about them and very few answers. And bringing us closer to answering what may be the biggest question in astronomy. Do the conditions for life exist beyond Earth? Jupiter has always been visible in our night sky. But it wasn't until 1879 when Irish astronomer and author Agnes Mary Clerke published this image that people could really appreciate that Jupiter was more than just a bright light above the horizon. It was a complex stormy planet with secrets to be revealed. Bigger telescopes and better probes introduced us to Jupiter's place in orbit. First came Pioneer 10, then Voyager, and later Hubble, Galileo, and Juno. Even the James Webb Space Telescope, using its near-infrared camera, NearCam, has given us an entirely new way to experience the planet. We understand that Jupiter is a wild place. Temperatures hover in the low negative 200s. It rains ammonia. And then there are the persistent winds that can top 400 miles per hour. This is not a place that would be likely to harbor the conditions for life as we know it. But for years, scientists have wondered whether Jupiter's moons could. And now they have built a pair of spacecraft that will allow them to observe these moons up close. After more than a decade of planning, the first of the two new missions toward Jupiter is ready for space. It's called JUICE, the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, and it is one of the most ambitious missions ever attempted by the European Space Agency. Its ultimate destination, four of the most intriguing celestial bodies in the solar system. Jupiter and its three ice-covered moons, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Planets and moons that formed at the distance of Jupiter and beyond are often very water-rich. There could be oceans inside Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. But it's more than just water beneath the moon's frozen surfaces that scientists are hoping to study. They want to understand the moon's sources of energy as well. We used to think that life could only exist uh, in the presence of sunlight, that we needed photosynthesis. Then scientists discovered creatures living in the dark under extreme temperatures and pressure, alongside vents spewing out toxic substances at the bottom of the oceans here on Earth. And now we know that life doesn't need photosynthesis, it just needs an energy source. And scientists believe that energy could come from tides being formed inside these moons, by the intense gravitational pull of Jupiter and the moons themselves. Not unlike the way our moon influences the tides here on Earth. This opens up whole new possibilities of ice-covered oceans inside these bodies that they could harbor life. This is one of the main objectives for JUICE, to search if on the environment, on the ocean world of Europa and Ganymede, they are the condition to sustain life. To discover whether or not there is enough water and energy below the icy surfaces of these moons, the mission will rely on one of the most high-powered suites of instruments ever sent to the Jupiter system. We have in total 10 scientific instruments on JUICE. We'll observe Jupiter and, and its moons in all possible wavelengths and, and type of observations that we can do. So we have a number of telescopes in all wavelengths. We have a radiometer to sense the atmosphere, the structure of the winds of Jupiter and their moons. 
uh, and we have uh, electric and magnetic sensors. Some of them will be deployed uh, at the tip of a magnetometer boom that we will deploy uh, in, in space. And we have also some particle package that will uh, uh, analyze the composition of the plasma environment of Jupiter and uh, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Each of these 10 instruments will tell us something new about the Jupiter system. What some see as a mini solar system unto itself. One key technology JUICE will use to search for water is an instrument known as RIME, the radar for icy moon exploration. So RIME is this big antenna that you see there deployed just behind us. Uh, it is a radar antenna that is working at a very low wavelength, 9 megahertz. So for that to happen, you need a very long piece of antenna uh, that will be able to sound very deep below the surface. The objective is to try and locate the liquid water ocean that is underneath the icy crust of these moons. And this antenna will help us figure out at which depth we can find this ocean. By directing radio waves at the moon's ice sheets and analyzing their echoes, RIME will be able to determine where below the surface liquid water might reside. Stretching 16 meters across, RIME may look delicate or precarious. But like every other part of JUICE, it went through an extensive test period that simulated the intensity of launch and the conditions it will face en route to Jupiter. Once it reaches beyond our atmosphere, it will experience the vacuum and shocking cold temperatures of space. To prepare JUICE for this portion of the journey, the team brought the vehicle to the Large Space Simulator, or LSS, in the Netherlands. For a month, the scientists and engineers challenged the spacecraft with blistering cold and air pressure one one hundred millionth of what it experiences on a normal day on Earth. But JUICE won't just experience the deep cold of space, it will also experience extreme heat as it passes into Venus's orbit for a slingshot that will hurl it close to the sun. Reproduce the, the heat side of space, eh? so when we go close to the sun, we simulate the sun. And in order to do so, we have a, a set of lamps, very powerful lamps that are reflected in a 20, 121 mirrors that can be uh, reconfigured depending on the mission characteristics. And in the, this case, we simulate the heat of the sun while the spa spacecraft goes through Venus. After surviving the blast of 200 degrees Celsius heat, JUICE will engage in two more Earth flybys before finally reaching Jupiter's orbit in 2031. Once there, JUICE will be greeted with even more extreme conditions. For one, Jupiter's radiation. Electronics are very susceptible to radiation, so we have to build everything to withstand these huge uh, stresses and this very um, pretty nasty environment. Uh, and they're going to be there for several years. And then there is the lack of solar energy to power the spacecraft and its batteries. To operate a spacecraft, you need energy, you need power. And normally we get power from the sun using solar rays. But around Jupiter, there is not much sun. Therefore, the solar ray has to be very big. On Jupiter, JUICE will feel 25 times less sunlight than it does on Earth. Designing these massive panels and engineering them to unfold once safely in space was the only option. After a year in Jupiter's orbit, JUICE will make its first of two flybys of Europa in 2032. And it won't be alone. NASA's Europa Clipper, launching in 2024 on a more powerful launch vehicle, will already be there. While JUICE's tour of the Jupiter system will see it visit three moons, Clipper will focus mostly on Europa. So we think that one of the best places uh, that life could exist in the solar system is on Europa, and we're going to try and understand whether the conditions are hospitable to life there. And one of the reasons is that the, uh, what we think is the liquid water ocean on Europa is more massive even than the ocean on Earth, even though Europa is just a fraction of the size of Earth. 
and the grooves on Europa's surface suggest that the tidal energy on this moon has been strong enough to crack its surface. Europa Clipper will arrive at the moon with its own suite of instruments, including thermal cameras, spectrometers, ice penetrating radar, and a dust analyzer to sniff out materials Europa ejects into space. In recent years, we've found tantalizing hints that there might be plumes of water vapor coming from the surface of Europa. Europa Clipper is going to come to quite low altitudes as it flies by Europa, even as low as 25 kilometers from the surface. So if we do identify a plume, and if it is in the right place for one of our ground tracks, then yes, it is possible that we would fly through a plume. We have a very sophisticated mass spectrometer uh, and other similar composition instruments um, that would be able to measure the composition of a plume if we were to fly through it. After working together to explore Europa, the two probes will go their separate ways. Clipper will continue its nearly 50 flybys of Europa, and after its own two flybys, JUICE will change course for Callisto. Callisto is Jupiter's second largest moon, and one of its stranger looking ones. Astronomers have long suspected that it too harbors an ocean, more than 150 miles below, but its surface also tells us a lot about the moon and how the Jupiter system operates. Callisto is the furthest one out. It really experiences very negligible tidal heating at this stage. Um, and its surface is almost completely covered in impact craters. We tell time on planetary bodies by looking at the number of impact craters, uh, which we expect to be roughly constant with time. We can assume that something that's very heavily impact cratered has probably just sat there and not much has happened on its surface. In all, JUICE will fly by Callisto more than 20 times, both to investigate the moon and to tweak its trajectory for the final destination on its voyage, Ganymede. This is the big one. Other probes have made flybys of other moons, but no spacecraft has ever orbited another planet's moon before. The JUICE spacecraft is going to be in orbit around Ganymede, and that is great because it, it gets very uniform coverage but it means that it doesn't last as long. You have to use a lot of fuel to stay in a circular orbit and the radiation is a bit more difficult if you're within you know, the Jovian magnetosphere. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. It's even larger than the planet Mercury. And the moon's surface has long intrigued scientists. Sprawling grooves similar to Europa's make the moon look like it has been raked over in places. But then more than a third of the surface is also cratered, a bit like Callisto's. As if it's kind of caught midway between being an old, ancient, heavily cratered surface and a surface that started to undergo more activity. Exploring the moon's oldest and newest surface features will give scientists a snapshot of how the moon and the solar system evolved and the hope is that it will also reveal the dynamics of a 60 mile deep subsurface ocean swirling between the ice capped surface and the icy, perhaps rocky inner moon. Could there be a mixing between water and minerals, a potential trigger for life as we know it, as it was here on Earth? Then, finally after more than four years exploring Jupiter and its icy moons, the JUICE mission will end with one final dramatic maneuver an intentional crash landing into Ganymede's surface, carefully executed to avoid potentially contaminating any near-surface water resources. The mission will be over, but JUICE's impact will reverberate for years to come. Each time we cast an eye on the Jupiter system, we learn something new about the planet and our solar system. And between the James Webb Space Telescope, Europa Clipper, and the JUICE mission, we can expect our understanding of Jupiter, its moons, and the potential for life beyond Earth to be revolutionized once again. <laughs>